Hello, physics students. This is Mr. Downing. Today we're talking about Newton's law of universal gravitation. Newton was a busy guy, made a lot of advances in the area of physics. Now, it's a common misconception, the story that an apple fell on Newton's head and suddenly the idea that there was gravity. People have known for literally thousands of years that gravity already existed. What he did discover was that gravity was universal. He discovered that this was not a unique property of planet Earth, but instead a property of all things that contained mass. So we experience this, Earth pulls on an apple, Earth pulls on the moon, but the sun pulls on Earth because the sun also has mass. Anything that has mass. Because of Newton's third law, if mass A exerts a gravitational force on mass B, then there's an equal and opposite force. So the force that A is on B is the force that B is on A. Equal and opposite. Now remember, it is the force of 1 on 2 is equal to the force of 2 on 1. It's the forces that are equal. The mass and the accelerations may not be equal. So that's why the Earth can accelerate us when we stand on it, but we do not accelerate it. Although the force of the Earth on us is equal to the force of us on the Earth. Our mass does pull on the Earth as well. So a gravitational field surrounds all massive objects. Massive doesn't just mean big, although that is its usual meaning in everyday language, but literally it just means things that has mass. And now we say force field. This isn't like some kind of magic protective shield bullets and lasers are bouncing off of. Field just means an area of space. And what's in that area of space? A gravitational force field. Just like a soccer field would be an area of space where soccer is, a force field is just an area of space where there's a gravitational force. And now, the closer you are, the stronger it is. And as you start to get farther away, it gets weaker. Now, this doesn't mean it goes away entirely. Even our astronauts orbiting around the Earth, they appear completely weightless. It's not that there's zero gravity on it, it's just the gravity gets very, very, very small. So it makes almost no difference. It's almost immeasurable, but it is there. It gets weaker as we go far away. It does not go away. It's based on this equation. F equals G M1 M2 over D squared. Now, this F right here, this is the force. The force between two masses. Mass one, and mass 2. These little subscripts right here are just letting us know which mass is which. Okay? Pay attention that the 2 written slightly beneath the letter is very different than this 2, which is written slightly above, because this is d squared, the distance between the masses. Now it has to be 2, because this is, the this is a force of gravity between two things. You don't have a force of gravity if you only have one object. The force of gravity interacts with another object. This here G is a constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Now pay attention, this is a number, okay? It is not a problem to work out. Now, sometimes it's useful just to know the effect when changing mass or distance. We don't want to do the whole problem. So we just look at how will it change. So we start with the standard force. This is how we're going to compare everything to. So we put 1 in for everything. 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 divided by 1 squared. This gives me my standard, or just 1. And then we'll make changes to this. For example, what if, what if I wanted the double m? So I'll put a 2 in for m. Because they were all 1s, that was the standard. Now this one's being doubled. If I work this out, I get f equals 2. We get twice the force. So the new force is two times as much originally. So if I started and had a gravitational force of five newtons, but then I doubled the mass, then I have ten newtons. That might seem really obvious, because double, obviously it's going to get bigger. Well, it depends. We have to follow the equation. If you want to double distance, so now we do the same thing. We solve the standard g, standard mass. Now the distance is doubled, and this is two squared. So when we have one over two squared, four. The new force is one-fourth as much as it was originally. So we double distance one-fourth the force. This all has to do with the equation. That's why we need to do it this way. We can't only listen to the words because doubling distance require, gives us a smaller force actually. So 
So, if you want to double distance and double both masses. So, F equals, so the G stays the same. We double the first mass, and we also double the second mass, and then we double distance, but it's squared. Okay, 2 times 2 is 4, divided by 2 squared, which is 4. So this gets us back just to 1, our normal, our base. Okay. Now, if we look here, what if we want to... Oh, so here, here it is solved out. So the force is the same as it was before we made changes. Because we might have double masses, which is increasing the force, but we also have double the distance, which is decreasing the force. So it all comes out to just our standard. So if we want to triple distance and double one mass, so we doubled one mass, we put in a 2 instead of a 1, and we tripled the distance, so we put in a 3. It's still going to come out to 2 ninths. Now the reason this is useful is because it's telling us a change. We don't have to completely rework a problem. If we had, you know, originally a force of 840 newtons, and then we tripled the distance and doubled a mass, we don't even know those distances or masses. We don't have to do all the math. We use this just to figure out how much it's changing. It changes by 2 ninths. Then we go, oh, if it's changing by 2 ninths, we'll take this original, 840, change it by 2 ninths, and then this problem is really simple. 840 times 2 ninths. So now my new force would just be 186.67 newtons. We don't have to do a long problem with that equation. We can just look how it changes.